Uh, so continue where we left off. Um, so I was just saying that they're susceptible to outliers. The next thing that you need to consider um, is that whenever you report correlation, you always need to report the mean and the standard deviation uh, of the two variables that you're measuring, of x and y. So always report mean and standard deviation of both x and y. So what, in this example, what you would do is you would say, I measured, say, 200 plants of this species, and they had a, their average height was, say, 18 centimeters with a standard deviation of 4, and their number of seeds, uh, the mean was, say, 27 with a standard deviation of 7, um, and they had a correlation coefficient of 0.97. But you always need to report the mean and the standard deviation between these two. Um, because that's fundamentally what correlation is measuring. It's measuring the variation in x and variation in y and how they're related. And so if you're going to report how the two variations are related, you need to report what the variations are and what, where they are centered around. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to regression. So regression is closely related to correlation but is different. All right. So what regression is, so regression is a linear relationship between two variables which are described by this equation. So it's a linear relationship. Um, but it's an actual line, which is described by y equals a plus b times x. What does that mean? So what that means is that y here, y here is your response variable. So in this case, it's seeds. Response variable. x is your explanatory vari variable. A is your intercept. Uh, but here, intercept. And B is your slope. So just looking at this, what this means is that your response variable, so that your number of seeds here, can be predicted by some equation relating to their height. So, to put that in more technical terms, is that what a regression does really is that you fit a line to data and that line minimizes error. So, how that works is basically if you have I'm going to draw in a line here in, in blue, is that a regression fits a line, and it'd probably be a line that would be something like this, this example. And some key points of this line are that it intercepts, here's the intercept at A. So the A here is where, uh, is where the line crosses the y-axis when x is 0. Now, if we think about this biologically in this example, that doesn't make any sense. How many seeds does a plant have which is of 0 height? A plant of 0 height is not a plant. It doesn't exist, right? And so, um, this, in this case, a is just a mathematical conceptual number. It's important for this line, but it has no biological meaning. But if you remember from the previous example where I said um, age of um, Argali related to their to their weight, you can have it, Argali's right can be age zero. They haven't yet reached one year old, so that does it somewhere. That line does cross um, where the intercept for that for that relationship between age and weight is biologically significant, right? So what the difference is essentially the intercept is biologically meaningful only if your x, x or x values go close to zero. That's not the case here, um, but that's still 
is important to describe this relationship, right? If the line, if the intercept was moved up here, but had the same slope, it, it wouldn't fit the data at all, right? So this, this is important mathematically, and it may be important biologically, but may not be. So what does the slope do? So the slope is how much height the line gains in one unit of x. So how so if this is one unit of x, then how much y does it get? How much height does it gain for that unit? For that for every growth, how many more plant seeds do you get? Right? That's the slope. So essentially, and that's really a key thing here, right? The, the slope, this b is usually the most important variable that you're looking for out of this relationship, right? Because it describes, well, how are my data related? Do they look like this? Do they look like this? Do they look like that? Right? So, um, and specifically what this means in this example um, is that if I were measuring height in centimeters, um, let's say that in this line it would be for every centimeter of height that my plant gains, it has three additional seeds. So that would be the slope. So in that case, the slope would be three because it has, for every gain in one unit of x, it gains three units of y. So that would be a height, that would be a slope of three. Um, okay, so how we actually mathematically fit this line um, is that this line is actually the sum of the square errors. What does that mean? So here is the line, but there's error, right? Is that there's a vertical distance from these points from the line, and that vertical distance represents the error. The error? Residual. They mean that these are the same thing. It's different words for the same thing. But it's this distance. Right? This distance in red, the vertical distance um, between your observed values, these points, compared to your theoretical line. Those are called your errors. And what is the sum of your squared errors is imagine you take this error, you square it, then you add it to the this error, which you also square. So you square this value plus the square of this value. Then you go to the next point, right? So plus the square of this value plus the square of this value. And what a regression line does is that it takes the line that minimizes that total number. So the minimizes the sum of the errors squared. So each error is squared and you add them all together and whatever line minimizes that number is your regression line. So now you don't need to worry about how to do that. You just need to worry about the fact what it means. So because a statistical program, whether it's Excel or R, will do this for you. And so, but you need to understand what it's doing, right? So it essentially it's taking these errors. So now you can actually graph these errors. These are you can graph the residuals, and that becomes really important for multiple regression. We're not going to deal with the multiple regression for quite a while, for several lessons. But you need to understand what a residual is, right? And the residual is just the vertical distance from each point to the predicted line. They have several variable, there are several characteristics of residuals that you need to think about, that you need to be aware of. So one is that they have an average of zero. That makes sense, right? Because the line should slice right through the middle of all your points. That means that the errors, half, half of your error is above the line and half your error is below the line. If more than, and that means that half of it, right, averages, it all averages to zero. If you had more than half above zero, right, then you would have to move the line down. And so essentially all of this error averages to zero. And the other thing which ends up being important um, is that they should have a normal distribution around the line. So what that means is that they, the residuals, actually fit a bell curve, a normal distribution, around the mean, so that there are many points that are close to the line, but there are only a few that are far away. Um, this becomes important in multiple aggression. Um, we, you don't really need to deal with it now other than to know what this, what this means for these purposes.